Hello, my name is Venus Castleberg, and I'm here to tell you a story. It's a true story, although some might think it's fantasy or fiction, but it is a true story because it's my story. Uh, when I turned 30 years old, I became a clairvoyant and a medium overnight. And what had happened was I was taking Reiki classes and I took my Reiki master class and I came home from um, taking this class and I asked my partner at the time if I could practice doing Reiki on him. And he said, yeah. <laughs> he liked, you know, all the metaphysical, spiritual stuff. So he was pretty open-minded, which was cool. Um, it probably saved me from myself back then. <laughs> anyway, I asked if I could practice on him. And then after one, while I was working on him, a uh, spirit walked into the room. And I said, well, this is interesting. <laughs> but a spirit just walked into the room and he said, great. <laughs> he always had a ton of enthusiasm, still does to this day. And he was like, what does he look like? <laughs> so I explained that he was tall, thin, had sunken eyes and a plaid shirt. And he was like, I know exactly who that is. That's Slim, a ranch hand from when I was a kid. And I was like, great, he's still alive? He's like, no, he's dead. And I was like, fan fucking tastic, I'm a medium. <laughs> and while I was asking for something different, I didn't think I was asking for that. <laughs> I really did want a different reality. And I knew there was something else going on. And, but man, becoming a medium was not what I wanted. And I would honestly say that I have spent the better part of maybe even the last 18 years resisting that particular gift. I did more so in the first three months of it. I, I really, I fought it. I didn't want to have that gift. I pretended it didn't exist. I even distanced myself from my mom for a while. Um, my mom and I have always been very close, but I just, I couldn't tell her. I really, really did not want to be seen as the crazy lady. I could just, I had this vision of being the crazy lady with, you know, 15 cats and, <laughs> and that really, I, you know, my name's Venus. Um, I'm six feet tall. I was born on leap year. So I was already pretty unique from the beginning. <laughs> and so having this happen so late in the game, I didn't have it when I was younger to my knowledge or my memory. And when I ha got this at 30, I was like, no, I don't want it. Take it back. I really didn't want this gift. I really didn't want, I didn't see it as a gift. I actually at that time saw it as a curse even. And I was like, okay. Um, and then three months went by of me just fighting it. I, I began to become depressed um, and really alienated myself from people uh, except for my partner at the time he was very accepting of it and like I said probably saved me from uh, myself and my own sanity he thought it was all very cool <laughs> so I was like oh good I'm glad somebody does so I I really didn't want the gift and three months goes by and I decided to do a vision quest and I went to Sedona, Arizona and I spent some time with somebody who is I'm still extremely grateful for and he just showed me some really cool things and lots of people in Sedona with gifts that were far greater than mine even maybe weirder than mine. <laughs> and I remember saying, I, 
I'm okay if, I mean, my gift's okay. <laughs> like I just kind of got to this like allowance and acceptance of it because I was like, it could be worse. <laughs> so I figured if it could be worse, I was grateful for what I had. So I, I moved forward from there <laughs> slightly. So I have lots of stories to tell and lots of um, things that have come out of me accepting that gift and other ones that, you know, I'll talk about at a later date. But one of the biggest things that I walked away from Sedona was, was that this awareness that I wasn't broken, that this wasn't a curse, and that it was a gift in some way, <laughs> even if I couldn't see how <laughs> or why. And I even called my mom and I asked her if she could sit down and I asked her if she, yeah, if she would sit down and listen to me. And I told her that I had become a clairvoyant medium and she said something to the effect of some of it surprises me, some of it doesn't, and did you think I wouldn't love you anyway? I guess I did. I guess I thought that, you know, she wouldn't accept that, you know? Um, and I don't until now. I have not told everybody about that gift. I have spent 18 years kind of having that in secret and in hidden. And at the same time, I've also gained a lot of awareness and I know a lot more about entities now. And I had the awareness and the invitation to start what I'm calling the entity experiment. And basically I'm going to be sharing some stories, some tools, some things that I've discovered along the way about how to work with entities, how to not be afraid of entities, <laughs> um, and what even is an entity. You know, a lot of people are like, okay, you know, we think of ghosts, and that, that is an entity, but that's not the only entity. So there are lots of different types of entities, um, lots of different possibilities. For me, I didn't really know I was a medium until I started to see spirits that were connected to people. And then when I would like describe this person then, or this being that I was seeing, the person that I was with would always go, I know exactly who that is. So it was more of just kind of practice. <laughs> like I, st I just started to acknowledge when I saw spirits. And then when spirits would come into the room, I would describe that I would ask the person first if they were open to hearing from somebody who just came into the room. And then <clears throat> I would describe them. And that usually the person would go, Oh, I know exactly who that is. So, so for example, uh, one time I was working with a lady and I said, okay, so a woman just walked into the room. She's elderly. And, but what it looked like to me was that this woman had like the perfect wig on because her, I mean, like it was white. And I said, did she wear a wig? And the woman just burst out laughing and started like saying, oh, that's so funny. No, but my grandmother never had a hair out of place. So her hair was always perfect and looked like a wig. So, um, but I, you know, I, for me, it was just confirmation after confirmation after confirmation because I had never seen these pe beings before. I'd never seen these people before. And almost every time I would describe them, the person I was talking to with the body would know who it was. So it's really just practice. It's like, I think probably the first thing I would say for a lot of people when it comes to entities is really just the acknowledgement. Start with the acknowledgement of that you do perceive them in some way, whether you feel them, whether you see them, whether you hear them, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how they show up for you. 
But acknowledging them will then allow you to strengthen that muscle. That you'll, you'll get stronger and better at it. So the more that I acknowledged the spirits that came in and described them, the more I saw, the more they showed themselves to me. But when I was trying to avoid it or hide it or pretend like it wasn't there, that it was, it wouldn't show them, they wouldn't show themselves to me, right? So it's, it's practice. Realizing that how you perceive them is going to be different than everybody else. So you might see them, you might see images, you might, in your mind's eye, you might see them with your physical eyes. Some people can do that. And I had an experience with that myself. You can hear them, you can um, feel them. That's the other thing too. They, like my team, when they were wanting to talk to me, they'll, they'll often, or they used to often, it felt like somebody was putting a hand on my shoulder, but it was kind of like this tingling in my shoulder blade. So just let me know they were there. It was kind of like another way that I perceive them is <laughs> they like to like put a tickle in my throat. Um, <laughs> so if you ever hear me like trying to clear my throat, it's probably an entity that I haven't necessarily acknowledged yet or um, communicated with. So those are just some ways that they can start showing up and, and then acknowledging for yourself that you do have a capacity with them in some way. One of the things that I've really noticed with people and even with myself at one point was just this fear of entities, this fear of being seen as crazy or weird and different, but then also the fear that somehow there's bad entities out there and there's negative entities out there and there's dark entities out there, and right? But what if that's not actually true? What if, now I'm not saying there aren't dark entities out there, but what if there's nothing to be afraid of? Stay tuned for the next video as we talk about fear and how to overcome fear of entities. So I wanted to just invite you to the entity experiment. And if you'd like to join me on this adventure, please hit subscribe. <laughs> Thank you and have a wonderful day.